Okay, well, this will be part one of a two-parter, maybe even a three-parter, because it's all about the biggest missing link in the evolution story, the beginning of life. After that, the second biggest missing link is how uh, things with no nucleus changed into cells that do have a nucleus, and then on and on it goes. It actually just gets worse. But the biggest one is life. Now here we're still in the March issue. Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, September of uh, this year. And look at what they're saying. They're still thinking that, you know, oh, if we could figure out how life started on this planet, it would guide us in uh, what to look for on the, uh, in the other planets when we're looking for different kinds of uh, 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 situations where there might be life. And they mentioned the, uh, the hot water uh, deep sea vents, uh, the, the black smokers at the bottom of the ocean theory on where life got started by Harold Morowitz and Robert Hazen, both professors at George Mason University where I got three of my degrees. And uh, Harold Morowitz was my biochemistry professor. He was kind of old then. He was a good teacher. I enjoyed his class. But uh, he co-authored with Robert Hazen uh, this theory. They're both good scientists. I used Hazen's textbook, Science Matters, as a required textbook in a class I taught in Vermont at the community college there. But the title of this article is, uh, Did Life Begin in a Place Like This? A Hot Geyser. Uh, where the temperatures are boiling or close to that or more than that. And here's an interesting thing they decided to quote. The rules of physics are the same throughout the universe. So what's to say the rules of biology don't carry through and are in place and active in the whole universe? They're really thinking the rules of biology support the origin of life on this planet, and therefore it could happen everywhere. But there aren't very many rules in biology. But one of the big ones is the law of biogenesis, which goes against uh, the spontaneous generation of life, which Louis Pasteur proved was wrong in 1864. Francesco Redi in 1688 also proved it was wrong. And every textbook starts out by uh, in the early chapter saying that the, the law of biogenesis is the truth. The cell law, that all cells come from previous existing cells biogenesis, that all life comes from pre-existing life, that that's, that's a, a magnum of science, but uh, they're, not, uh, they're not saying that. They're saying, okay, and how do they get away with this? I'm sorry, but I, what I'm about to show you is what the Bible calls willingly ignorant, which I heard a preacher say dumb on purpose. These are smart people. They're all very highly educated, very intelligent, high IQ individuals that are saying these profoundly stupid things that are based on a desperate desire to stay ignorant of the main law in biology that life only comes from life. Look at what they're saying. Look at this. I am shocked by highly intelligent people. The recipe for life is just a couple things and water and an energy source. And, and we, you know, we creationists always make fun of them for saying that they think life is just add water. So anywhere where you find water in the universe, there must be life. Uh, but they're saying it here themselves. They are willingly ignorant. I cannot believe that they would actually dump, ready, pastor, uh, all of the, the great fathers of biological science. I mean, pastor invented the, the vaccination, uh, finally proved the germ theory of disease. I mean, pastor, and of course, pasteurized milk. But... What, how could they not see this so blinded, so blinded? The only explanation is the evil spell come up out of hell by the devil himself. It's the only explanation that's smart, intelligent, educated. Now, educated people who know all of what I'm telling you would still believe that all you need is water and you'll have life. If that was true, we should have been able to make life in a test tube already, but we haven't. When we finally do, will just only prove that it takes a team of 50 scientists and billions of dollars of research and many intelligent minds to intelligently design some kind of little bacteria guy. Uh, none of that will prove that life just splashes up out of mud puddles just to add water. But that's what they'll say it does when they finally, when G. Craig Ventner finally produces the first synthetic 
um, or living uh, organism bacteria do. They'll say that see, see, God, God uh, did not make life; it happened by itself. When they just proved it won't happen in a test tube unless you have a lot of brains behind it. What? It's so self-defeating. It so crosses the lines of its own thinking. The ingredients of life are water and an energy source. Well, let's just throw a stick of dynamite in a lake. We should we should make blue whales that way. I'm not exaggerating. That it just takes lots of time. But yeah, stick a dynamite in a in a pond, that ought to that ought to make a blue whale. Just give it three and a half billion years and it'll happen. It's almost certain. <laughs> That's what they say. So what was it like on the early Earth, you know, originally on this planet? Uh, I just love this central quote. The rules of biology say evolution can't happen. And so I'm with them. <laughs> it would take a miracle, which would take a miracle maker. Unless you, you know, believe it's Thanos with his snap reverse or something like that. Well, you keep thinking and we'll continue with this long article where they try to... Uh, a schmooze and smooth and uh, snake their way into a weaselly excuse that says that, oh yeah, even though all the laws of science say evolution can't even start from step one, uh, isn't it wonderful how it happened? You keep thinking, Dr. J.